As Marie said, I'm, I'm here to talk a, a little bit about leadership. I think the most important thing that you can learn uh, in your educational experience is about leadership and developing your own leadership. And I believe that uh, understanding your own leadership starts with understanding your values. What I'd like to suggest to you is a, a worthwhile exercise for all of us as students of leadership is to understand where our beliefs come from. Take a look at the organizations you're members of and what values those organizations have. Understand what values your family may have tried to socialize uh, in you, what culture you're part of, what experiences you've had. And, and as you do that, get in touch with how that has affected your leadership beliefs. Organizations, people in organizations and large organizations like to work for leaders who are predictable. They like to work for leaders who they know what's important to that leader. And I've been uh, keeping track of my leadership beliefs for over 15 years now. I started many years ago, uh, and I found that over time, uh, it's become more and more valuable to me as a leader as I lead larger and larger organizations. The other thing is that uh, leadership is oftentimes storytelling. Noel Tishi, a university, University of Michigan uh, Ross School, business school professor, wrote a book called The Leadership Engine. And in that book, he talked about the importance of storytelling and leadership. And his point in that book is, wouldn't it be better if all of us were more deliberate about the stories we want to tell and the circumstances we want to tell about uh, in order uh, to communicate those, those learnings and lessons of leadership. What I'd like to do now is I'm going to try to role model for you uh, what you might want to do in terms of developing your own leadership beliefs. I'm going to share with you my 10 leadership beliefs, and each time I'm going to try to tie those back to experiences I've had, and I will tell stories. In fact, you'll catch me telling stories. Um, that, that, that tie back to those beliefs and created those beliefs. If at the end you find this to have been helpful, then I would like to suggest to you, spend some time writing down your beliefs and the experiences that came from them. And I would be happy to help you. Uh, my email address is mcdonald.ra at pg.com. And if you want to take this on, I would be happy to, to help you in the development of your own leadership beliefs. So let's get started. And, uh, and we'll come back to the, the process itself. My first belief is that living a life driven by a purpose is more meaningful and more rewarding than simply meandering through life. Fast forward for me. Imagine you're on a bed in a hospital somewhere and you're about to die. And somebody you love says to you, did you accomplish what you set out to accomplish in life? Now, I know that seems far off, and all of us uh, seem immortal, but someday that will happen. And, and you might want to say to yourself, okay, well, have, what, what was my purpose in life? What was my purpose? Do you have a purpose? Have you talked about it with your loved ones? Have you written it down? Have you spent time to really think about this? If not, I would suggest that uh, it might be worthwhile spending some time thinking about that. Because if somebody asks you that question right before you die, what would your answer be? Would your answer be, yes, my purpose in life was to, uh, was to help others, was to touch and improve lives. That's the P and G purpose, touch and improve lives. Um, or, gee, I don't know, I didn't think about it, and as a result, uh, I meandered through life. It's amazing how your calendar and external events can control you, and particularly if you're in a, if you're in a big and important job, and if you don't set time aside to work on the things that are important to you, those things will never get done. I know in my case, as a CEO of a large company, I ask my assistant, we sit down every so often, we go through my calendar, and we say, are we spending time on the things that are important to us? Is our purpose driving our calendar or are external events driving us? And too often, if you allow it to happen, external events will drive what you work on and you will never accomplish your purpose. So setting a purpose, I think, is critically important. Now, in my case, believe it or not, these are the same three people. <laughs> On the far left, you have me as a Boy Scout. I was a Boy Scout. And the reason I was a Boy Scout was I loved the Boy Scout motto. 
help other people. That meant a lot to me. Any of you Boy Scouts? We're Boy Scouts? It's great to see. My son's an Eagle Scout. I'm very proud of him. In the middle uh, was my graduation from West Point. I went to West Point because I wanted to lead a different life. I wanted to see if I could help other people, particularly at that time, uh, you know, there were people living around the world who weren't free. And I thought that I could play a role through being an officer in the military that, uh, that would, be, that would uh, help those people uh, lead a more free life. Now, you may wonder, anybody recognize, this is ancient history, anybody recognize who that is I'm getting my diploma from? Yeah. Yeah, President Ford. Yeah, you may see he wrote a little note to me on the bottom of the, of the picture. He said, Bob, I can't believe you graduated. The picture on the far right is me the day I joined Procter & Gamble. And one of the reasons I joined the Procter & Gamble company, I had a lot of hair then, right? And one of the reasons I, I joined the Procter & Gamble company was because of the company's purpose. You know, this is a company, Procter & Gamble, that's been around 172 years. And through that 172-year history, it's our purpose that has always been the hallmark of everything we do. And while the statement of purpose is long, the key words here are touching and improving lives now and for generations to come. You know, we've been, we want to be around another 172 years, and in order to do that, we have to stay true to our purpose. In those 172 years, 25% of the time, we've operated in economies that have been in recession, or we've had world wars, or we've had other things that could disrupt our business. But by focusing on that purpose of touching and improving lives, it's helped us survive as a company over those 172 years. If you go back to 1955, which is only two years after I was born, there were 50 of the top 50 companies in the United States. Guess how many are still on that Fortune 50 list today? Guesses? Five? Nine. Of the top 50 companies in 1955, only nine are still on that list today. 41 have fallen off that list. The Procter & Gamble Company was on that list in 1955. We want it to be on that list 172 years from now. And in order to do that, we think key to it is the purpose of the company. It's what attracted me to the company, and it tends to be what attracts a lot of people uh, to our company. We've turned that purpose now into a growth strategy. We call our growth strategy purpose-inspired growth. And this purpose-inspired growth is about touching and improving more consumers' lives in more parts of the world more completely. What that means is we want to get all of our product categories into all countries around the world. We want to introduce all brands in every category. We want to get, we want to get so we can touch and improve every consumer life in the world. Today, we're only touching about 4 billion people's lives in the world. We'd like to get that to 5 billion over the next five years. Today, the average man, woman, and child in the world spends $12 a year on Procter & Gamble products. We'd like to, over the next five years, get that to $14 a year. Not just because the amount of revenue per person is important, but because that means we're touching and improving more consumers' lives. Another important aspect of the company that attracted me were the values of the company. Leadership, ownership, passion for winning, trust, and integrity. These are important values, and they attracted me. Now, the Procter & Gamble Company may have no interest to you, but what is important is if you're thinking about your own purpose, look at the organizations you're a member of. Understand what the values of those organizations are. What are the purposes of those organizations? You obviously join those organizations for a reason, and maybe that will give you a clue as to what your purpose is. Maybe it will also give you a clue as to what your uh, what culture you like to operate in. Maybe it'll give you a clue as to what your leadership beliefs are. Certainly being part of Procter & Gamble has had a big impact on my beliefs as I've worked on those beliefs over the last 15 or 20 years. 